here we have the beginning of the suspension upgrade I'm getting the jack in place jack stands here I'm gonna be uh, raising this thing up off of the ground so I can get these uh, wheels off and get to the suspension we're upgrading the equalizer and all the bolts will become wet bolts which will be greasable with zert fittings on them okay here we have the rig jacked up we got some uh, six ton jack stands under here uh, some four inch cap blocks stacked give me some extra height under here and uh, we've got our uh, our tires are completely off the ground it's going to allow me to uh, put a uh, another jack under the axles and uh, take the weight off of the axle so that we can get to these bolts okay so we've got the uh, trailer jacked up here and uh, we've got our our wheels off and uh, some things about your wheels <clears throat> um, if you ever take your rig to have new wheels put on it and they do not balance the wheels or if you ask about it they say it's on a trailer it doesn't matter go somewhere else your wheels should always be balanced no matter whether it's on your camper your truck golf cart whatever they should be balanced so that being said I've had I went to places before and they said well we don't balance trailer tires go somewhere else so <clears throat> so everything's up on jack stands here so what we're going to replace is uh we're replacing this equalizer this is a cast iron piece right here and the only movement that this piece is it's like a seesaw it rocks back and forth on this center bolt so when this axle goes up or down it affects this equalizer and it either lifts it up on this end or or down on this end and what that does it causes chucking in the suspension and all of that chucking and that vibration from this equalizer goes right up through this frame and vibrates your whole rig as you're driving down the road so <clears throat> what we're putting back on here <clears throat> is a leopard trail air road armor so this is going to go in here and then we've got new straps and new bolts so as you can see looking at that and looking at this and this has a rubber compound in here that absorbs that back and forth motion when you're going down the road and this device here also has the capability of swinging more than three and a half inches in each direction if you hit potholes or divots in the road so our new hardware that we're putting on we're replacing all these bolts we're even replacing the rear shackle and the front shackle bolts all of these boat bolts are going to be wet bolts you can see there's a zerk fitting in the end where you will be able to pump grease through this bolt comes out through this hole and that grease gets inside of the bushing inside of the uh, the roll of this leaf spring that greatly extends the life of the bushings and the bolts the hardware and everything <clears throat> so these shackles here this is what come on here if you can see how thick these things are they're uh, they're pretty thin piece of metal <clears throat> the kit that I ordered to go back in here is considered heavy duty there is the thickness of the heavy duty shackles with the wet bolts in them compared to what comes on it these things here I've seen them people report them bending and warping I don't think there'll be any trouble with these shackle straps here bending or warping so these will go back in with the new uh, equalizer we're putting in and we'll grease everything up and uh, here's the back of the shackle straps you can see and uh, I couldn't believe when I took them out of the box how thick they actually are compared to what's considered a standard duty uh, shackle strap. So, and I've got I've got uh, jack stands underneath the axles themselves, 
so we've taken the weight off of these axle straps so where we can get these out put the new ones in and get the get everything retorqued so we'll uh we'll get these changed out and keep going so here we are with some uh disassembly happening so the one thing I found out was this road armor equalizer if you have shackle straps that go on here that are two and a quarter inches and this is a 35 inch center to center axle assembly you will not be able to use a two and a quarter inch shackle back you can see it's not gonna make it so I had to order three and an eighth shackle straps. You can see here the difference in these. The other thing, I went ahead and ordered some new bushings that go inside of these curled spring leaves here. So these come from the factory with nylon, AKA plastic crap right here this thing has less than 500 miles on it it literally went from the manufacturer to trenton ohio to westchester ohio this is absolute crap that you're going to get in this thing so i'm going back with good bronze bushings and wet bolts so i can put grease into these wear points and reduce the friction so I'm gonna to try to get these shackle straps in here and as usual things go late into the evening finishing up the left side suspension here so we've got the uh, greasable wet bolts in our uh, shackle hangers now and of course we replace the plastic nylon bushings in there with the bronze here we've got our uh, our road armor uh, suspension in and our new longer three and one eighth inch center hole to center hole is how that is measured and these are also wet bolts um, the road armor comes with the bronze bushings in its mounts so you don't have to worry about that you only have to replace uh, what comes in the cheap ass springs that uh, Lippard uh, provides Forest River. You know, how much more could it cost on the rig? Uh, another $20 to get axles with springs with good bushings or never fail bushings in the spring shackles. It's it's sometimes absolutely asinine at the places that they want to cut a dollar this your your investment is riding on these axles and they put the cheapest thing in here they possibly can and there's the front uh, shackle hanger and uh, also we put a new bronze bushing in there and of course the wet bolt and uh, tomorrow I'll get the wheels back on this side and we will remove the right side suspension and do the exact same thing. Here we have the right side of the suspension. Everything is uh, back in place. And uh, you can see here, we have a new bolt back here. I have not put the Zert fittings back in yet um, due to having to hit these uh, bolts with a hammer to seat them back into the uh, shackle hangers. Uh, you want to take that Zert fitting off, make sure you don't damage it or snap it off in that uh, threaded opening. So, here's our road armor uh, new equalizer. And uh, you can see the thickness of these uh, heavy duty shackle straps. I'm gonna reach and get a, one of the uh, shackle straps that came off and uh, 
hold it up here and uh, you can uh, see the uh, difference in uh, what comes on the uh, cheap suspension setup and uh, what we have here for the heavy duty. So out with the cheap, in with the heavy duty. And here's our front spring hanger and uh, we got our bolt in place there. And um, all of these bolts get torqued to 50 foot-pounds when, uh, when you put them back together. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot. Um, typically when you're dealing with heavy-duty components, you're upwards around 80 pounds, 80 foot-pounds of torque. But uh, Lippert says only to torque these up to 50 pounds. So it's 30 to 50, but I'm going to go to the high limit, and I'm going to do mine at 50 pounds. So, and uh, we'll uh, get the uh, the wheels back on here and get all of these jack stands out from under the rig and uh, set it back on the ground. We've got all of our greasable Zerk fittings back into the head of our bolts. Um, you can see uh, the red and tacky. Uh, Lucas grease oozing out around these uh, connectors where we've uh, greased all of these up. I like using uh, Lucas um, red and tacky grease for my my axle bearings and uh, anything on the rig that uh, uses a, a grease. Basically it's a uh, it's a very high temperature. It's like a 540 degree uh, breakdown temperature on uh, Lucas's uh, red and tacky grease. It's uh, heavy duty. It's for farm implement implements, uh, universal joints, uh, greasing your everything on tractors or combines or anything that's used for uh, the farming industry. And uh, it's just a, a very heavy duty, good lubricant, and it has a, a very high tolerance for heat. So you can't go wrong with that stuff. I've used it for years and uh, have no complaints. So we're going to get our, uh, our wheels uh, mounted back on this side. And I think while I've got this thing raised up here, I think I might do a little fine tuning on the uh, brake adjustment here. I want. I want these things to just have a just a a little bit of a rub on the brake shoe there, and uh, I'm going to adjust all all four of the uh, brake shoes, and uh, I'll get it back together and on the ground, and uh, we'll take another look. Okay, I'm going to put this on here with the uh, spare tire relocation. Um, the Forest River Sabre 38 DBQ comes factory with um, these Castle Rock STs and um, they're uh, a no-name made to China tire uh, and uh, I'm sure they're, I think you can buy them off of Amazon all day long for about $80 a tire and uh, these things uh, will pop on you going down the road and they will tear up your rig and leave you sitting on the side of the highway so this is the second uh, fifth wheel we've had where we've used carlisle tires they are made in china uh, as you can see here stamped on the wheel or the tire and but carlisle uh, is an american company and they do monitor the production of these tires I'm pretty sure that the uh, someone had said that the Carlisle factory in China is a 9006 ISO certified uh, facility. So these are a load range G 14 ply tire um, and has a single max load range of 4,080 pounds per tire. This is a ST23580 R16. The tire series is called a CSL 16. 
they only make two sizes in this G rated tire. So uh, we replaced um, all four of the tires on the uh, fifth wheel with these Carlisle G rated tires. And we also run our uh, tire pressure and tire air temperature monitoring system called Easy Tire on these. So um, just thought I would put that out there in this video with the relocation of the spare. And the spare I'm keeping, the Castle Rock uh, ST that came with the camper um, due to the, uh, you know, that should only be on there a short period of time if I did get a flat while on the road. Uh, one reason why I went with the Carlisles is that they are readily available through uh, Discount Tire and you can get them with a road hazard warranty. If you ever run over anything or get a screw or a nail in these tires, up until they are to the point of being considered worn beyond good use, which I think is something in the range of like three sixteenths of an inch of tread life left, they will replace the tire in its entirety, not prorated replace the tire so that's why i went with uh, the carlisles and i got them through discount tire